Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday morning here in Australia and things still aren't looking great. Look, not awful yet. Total market cap still holding on to that $2 trillion mark just. And look, if it can hold around here, then hopefully we should be able to move up. But as I've said before, I'm just not so sure at the moment. Uh, you know, yeah, I am... I'm worried short term, I'm not worried long term. Long term, I still really believe in crypto and Bitcoin uh, and even Ethereum, provided Ethereum 2.0 can you know, finally get sorted. But I do think that's the future. But look, everything's shaky. All markets are shaky as we looked at yesterday. All right, what's doing well in the top 100? Has anything done well in the top 100? All right, couple of small moves. Link's up, Dash is up, Adam's up, uh, Osmosis is up, Zcash internet computer but look the market cap has been going down for a while so i think these will most likely be lost in the next sort of 48 hours now number one as always i'm never offering you financial advice you've got to do what's right by you so if this is all not working for you and you've got to get out and you're in profit then hey th there's nothing lost no one ever lost money taking profits just remember that could the market then all of a sudden go up tomorrow and you miss out on a whole stack yes but there's just as much chance that it goes a whole lot lower and maybe you selling out would be a good time. Again, you've always got to do what's right by you. Don't blindly follow anyone else's advice unless it's some, you know, sort of, you know, even then, you know, so-called experts. You've got to be careful. In the end, you really have to make your own decisions and then you've got to, you know, yeah, you've just got to take responsibility for those decisions. I've already told you, I rebalanced back in sort of December, mid-December. Uh, I got myself a better cash position and I'm trying to sit on as much of that as that of that of cash as I can uh, until I feel like there's a change. But in saying that, I'm still buying like my dollar cost averaging, my sort of fortnightly buys. I buy a little bit of Bitcoin, buy a little bit of Ethereum. And if some of the altcoins that I like, I see a reasonable price at them then i'll put a few dollars in but i'm really not chasing anything too hard at the moment i'm focusing more on cash because i suspect that unfortunately we are going lower and look there's definitely a possibility that we're going much lower so that's something that i just keep in mind so again you do you don't blindly follow me because uh this is what i'm doing or this is what i'm not doing you've always got to make your own mind up and do your own research because i've said this before and i'll say it again i've been wrong before and i will be wrong again i don't know at all i'm just a guy on youtube giving you my opinion and i'm someone who's been in uh, this space for a little while and like i said i'm still making uh you know choices that aren't the best choice and look even some choices that are wrong plain and simple uh, all of us do that there is no perfect investor that never gets anything wrong never makes a wrong decision you learn you get you know you get the most growth out of your mistakes that's a saying that they have you know you learn the most from making mistakes as long as you learn then there's nothing bad about it but if you make silly mistakes i.e throwing all your money into you know one random old coin uh, and it doesn't do well then you know that, that was a really bad mistake but again you will learn from it all right so a couple of gains but look let's have a look at the losses the losses are you know staggering you know double digit gains in some really nice projects here helium luna uh, Loopring, Kadena, Olympus, Raven, you know, that really hurts. And then plenty of high single digit losses as well. You know, Solana, uh, AVAX, Crypto.com, you know, even Polygon, there we go, getting back down to $2, got up to nearly $3. The Polygon chart does look a little bit like the Bitcoin chart, uh, kind of topped out twice and then has rolled over. So a lot of coins looking sort of fairly similar. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right. It did bounce quite nicely off this $40,000 mark. This little wick here, like, you know, we can zoom in. Perfectly touched it and just held it. So there is some sort of hope that this is going to hold. Again, this kind of $40,000 mark that maybe this is the bottom. I'm just not sold on it yet. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm hoping that is the truth, but I'm just not sold yet. But I would hope that this would be the bottom and then we bounce and start to go higher. But there's just a lot of, you know, sort of 
not great news out there with the Fed uh, tapering and you know interest rate hikes and things like that. That is most likely going to push us lower, but it's not guaranteed. So there is a small sliver of hope. But again, I think if we kind of lose this kind of forty thousand dollar level, we are quickly going to get down into here. We're quickly going to come down to the kind of thirty seven, thirty six thousand dollar range. And then again, we're all hoping that this is where we find support. But considering there is a CME gap just down here. I think it's probably reasonable that this CME gap will get filled. Every time we kind of drop one of these levels, I'm really more confident, and I'm not saying I'm 100% confident, I'm just more confident than I was the day before that this CME gap down here at kind of 32,500 is going to get filled. It's just where it goes from there. But again, people are saying, you know, there's people out there saying, see, this is what happens when you're in crypto and stuff, and I explained this yesterday. Well, where do you go? S&P 500 down, setting in a new, new, not a new all-time low, but just a new low. Dow Jones Industrial setting in another low. Gold gone down. We got a small little pump here, but gold's been going down for a while. Gold has been going down since 2011. It's had spikes uh, where it's gone back up, but it's down a long way from where it was back in 2011. And this is the gold and silver. Uh, index as well so it's not just the pro gold, price of gold sorry excuse me but it's going down ASX if you're Australian it's going down as well so there's no real safe haven at the moment as I said yesterday other than property but if we start getting hit with interest rate hikes and things like that houses that people could only just barely afford now and a lot of people have bought lately because the housing market has been on a massive boom they are probably going to lose well, not probably, because again, I never offer your financial advice, but they might lose 20, 30% off the price of their houses that have bought at all time highs. And then the interest rates are also going to go up. So they can't afford these houses for a start because they could only just barely get in with these, you know, 0% kind of interest rates that we had. And now all of a sudden interest rates go up. So then houses start to sell off. So it is possible that we see some not pretty action in the property market now it's only unfortunately going to hurt the people who really bought in the last you know probably year or two anyone who's probably five or ten years in that are probably still doing all right they've half paid their house off or maybe even more but unfortunately the people who've got in in the last probably couple of years they might really start to hurt and then prices of houses will you know could possibly come down even further because people have to sell and then they have to start selling really cheap so again None of this is guaranteed. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I am definitely concerned that property is not even going to be that safe haven. You know, if we really go into some kind of depression, you know, recession, all that kind of stuff, then things could get ugly. And that means there is no safe uh, haven sort of asset. Again, people then start to move into the dollar and think the dollars are the safe haven asset. Well, it's not in the short term it is, but in the long term, again, the printing will never stop. They, or at least not for any length of time. They may, you know, I can't imagine they're going to stop printing ever full stop. I could be wrong, but they will eventually have to start printing. That is just the way the system works. They can't not print money. Just remember that. So long term, the dollar is not the answer. Short term, and you know, whether you believe in uh, Bitcoin or not uh, is a completely different story, but things like Bitcoin uh, and property, they're generally pretty good because eventually the printer starts up again and so the money will just get, you know, continue to be printed. That doesn't happen with property. You can't continue to print more property. You can build more houses, but it's the land. They can't print more land. We've got X amount of land on earth and then that is just it. Then we run out of land. So property is a good long-term bet, but unfortunately short-term, particularly in uh, times like we are now, it may not be the best bet. And you can just hope that the people that bought in the last two years with interest rates possibly going up and that can still afford to lose their homes because it would be horrible for them to have bought homes to then just simply lose them because of things like that. But, and here's the terrible part, and this is all sorts of investing. You know, there's going to be people out there who will be able to come into the market when it's been unfortunate for others and then do really well. So they're just, you know, some of the ups and downs. Now, the 
Bitcoin futures market, CME gap, sorry, is what I'm talking about. We're getting on to the futures later. These are the CME gaps that I was talking about. So this is the one that I'm looking for that I think it's most likely going to come down to. 32,500 to 34,500. This is where I think it could come down to and I would hope that we find a bounce from here. But again, with all the stuff I was just talking about, you know, Fed, uh, Fed raking up, uh, hiking up the rates, you know, and things like that, this may not be it. It may be something like this. Now, what's going to be scary is if we come down to this because Bitcoin has never gone below its old all-time high before. But if it does, now there is a little CME gap just kind of down in here. So at around about the $11,000 range, but I don't really count that because we've kind of been there before. So it was created here and we never came back down and retested it, but we had been there before. So I'm not really kind of counting that one too much, although I'm not saying you can't, but there is one at 11,000. But look at this, 9,000. 9,600 to about 9,000 sort of, uh, you know, let's say roughly kind of 10,000. Again, you can grab that and pull it up a little bit. But these are the CME gaps and these just generally get filled. Most CME gaps have been filled. Again, look, there's even a little CME gap just in here, but I mean, you've got a wick in there. So again, I haven't really counted it, but you could maybe say there's one at around about kind of 21,000. I'm going just for the obvious ones where, yeah, again, it's obvious. So this is what I'm looking at. I really think, again, the chances are increasing that we're going to come back down here at the moment. Now, I am hopeful that, again, some other news comes out and things change. But just at the moment, not a lot of good news that I can really sort of think of. And again, I don't have any great news stories. There's nothing really out there that's you know, of any interest at least to me. And if you're watching my channel, I'm guessing you have similar interest to me. I didn't see anything that made me think, oh yeah, I should really report about that. Other than we just need to look at where all markets are at the moment. Because again, Bitcoin, down. S&P 500, down. Dow Jones, down. Gold, coming down again, been going down for a long time, way down from its 2011 highs. ASX, going down so there we are to here if everything's going down it's unlikely cryptocurrencies are suddenly going to turn and change all markets are correlated just remember that it's just about how correlated they are but if the big markets are going down you can guarantee the other markets if they aren't already going down they're not too far away so these are really the cme gaps that i'm looking at and where I'm going to have buy orders at. Just a little bit above them, because they might only quickly kind of wick into there, and then that could be the rebound point. But if that's not the case, then I'm only buying a little bit here, and I'm only buying a little bit just above here, and I'm only buying just a little bit above here. And if by some miracle, I mean, we come down to here, then yeah, that would be some truly troubling times. And don't get me wrong, I'll buy some more there, but I still wouldn't be piling all in there because something has really changed if Bitcoin is getting down to there, let alone really getting down to here. But we already know the cycles have changed based on what we're seeing right now. It's just how far have they changed? Because not every cycle, and we've only had a few cycles, is none of the cycles have ever been exactly the same. They've just been somewhat similar. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now what I want to do is have a look at this total crypto uh, market cap. As I said before, we've had some ranging points. Really, it's that kind of $1.7 trillion mark up to about kind of the $2.4 trillion mark. We've wicked out above it and we even had a fake out where we made it all the way up to $3 trillion. Uh, well, yeah, $3 trillion, 3 .1, 3 point, sorry, $3.01, $3.02 thereabouts. And a lot of people were super bullish that we were going higher. It was more a four, five trillion dollar mark. Now I think eventually we get there, but just things have changed. And we got to remember the old financial system, they aren't ready to give up. And a lot of what's going on right now is the old financial system. You know, raising rates and, you know, pumping the dollar and all the rest of it. I just wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't some kind of a coordinated attack to try and fend off cryptocurrencies and things like that. It won't last though, because eventually people will clue on that the money printer most likely never stopped. It just slowed down, but it is going to continue to print. So again, the, what I'm looking for is that the total market cap is gonna come somewhere down to around about here. 
1.7 sort of let's have a look what mark did we have 1.75 let's say 1.76 trillion is where I think it's most likely going to get down to. Now, it doesn't have to come down and touch exactly here. It could come down to somewhere around about here. So 1.83 trillion, and we could get the bounce from there. But again, going back to here, this 34, uh, 32K thousand dollar level, that's more going to be down around about, excuse me, here. 1.3 sort of five trillion dollar mark. So it is definitely possible that that happens. And then again, if things really get ugly, and we're looking at these prices down here, well then we're probably looking at getting back down into sort of here and maybe even prices down around about here. That is absolutely scary. Not saying it's going to do it. I'm not trying to spread FUD. I'm just trying to say that these are the kind of levels that possibly we're going to come down to. Again, more around about here. I'd be surprised if we came down here. But hey, look, if things get really ugly, this is really, really where I'd be looking for next. Again, that kind of, yeah, oh, that would be scary. $300 billion mark. I mean, what kind of retracement would that be? Let's have a look. From where we are now, down to around about sort of here. 86% retracement, roughly from the top. That would be one hell of a retracement and not unheard of. But again, what I want you to remember is we've never gone below old all time highs. So really I'd more be looking at from the top down to around about where we are. I'm gonna say just short of it, a 74% retracement. I think that's definitely possible. And on the cards, is it likely? Not so sure. Again, I'm thinking more somewhere in around here because then it marries up with kind of, again, where we got some of these levels over uh, sort of here is where I'm more thinking. And yeah, scary thought. Now, here's the reason why I think we still could be going lower, unfortunately. This is the Bitcoin longs versus uh, shorts. Oh, and this is changing kind of minute by minute, but before, and it is on five minutes, so let's, uh, go 24 hours. We still got a little bit of longs going right there. People are still probably a little bit, it's almost 50-50, you know, kind of thereabouts, but again, it kind of changes. I think once we get more bearish and more people are going short, that's when we're going to get the bounce, and we're just not there yet. Hence why I think there is definitely a good chance that we go lower. But look, 50-50 obviously means we could go either way. And there is a lot of support kind of around here, that $40,000 level. So maybe this is the bottom. So there is a little bit of hopium in there, ladies and gentlemen, but the honest truth is no one knows exactly where it's going. We're all just taking guesses. You know, some people are literally just pulling stuff out of their backside and that's fine. Like, I'm not going to pretend like I never did it when I first got into this, you know, four years ago. I was just thinking I knew what I was talking about and in all fairness, today I still think, uh, it, I still don't think I know exactly what I'm talking about. I just have a, what I like to think is a more educated opinion, but far from any expert. But I'm just looking at charts and things that are going on and I'm picking levels and I am hoping that this is the bottom and we get a spring from here. I just, yeah, I don't know. I'm 50-50 in all fairness. I don't know if we're going higher or lower. All I know is I'm prepared for either either outcome. I hope you are as well, ladies and gentlemen. I wish I could bring you a much more exciting and better story, but yeah, that's the way things are. But actually, yeah, no, I'll just leave it at that and we'll look at that tomorrow. <sighs> Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment and that's unfortunate, but you know, eventually the sun will come out, as they always say. I just don't know when it's coming out yet. Are we still uh, in the middle of the night with a whole lot more, uh, you know, darkness to follow? Or are we just about to kind of, are we at the, the last part where it's the darkest and the sun is just about to come out? God, I hope so. All right, I'm out. I'll see you next time.